Now, one of the issues both of us are concerned about is the rise of uh, cultural Marxism, which uh, what I see it as is obviously the uh, left, they've realised that economic Marxism has failed with the collapse of the Soviet Union and fall of the, the Berlin Wall. So now they're attacking our, our cultural institution. Now, the, the left, they try to um, claim that this term cultural Marxism, it's a made up term, that it's uh, a dog whistle to uh, conservatives for, you know, saying that you shouldn't like, uh, you know, these uh, certain things. How do you define um, cultural Marxism and why do you think it's such a threat? Well, I think we should start with, you know, what is Marxism in its classical sense? So, um, I mean, it's, you could Google it, it's classical Marxism, it's um, dictatorship by the proletariat um, and, you know, associate definitions to go about. So, um, cultural Marxism, therefore, it's, you take all the economics out and, um, you know, you get cultural Marxism. So, I mean, how would I define it? It would be um, attempts to eradicate um, I, I believe it's ultimately an attempt to eradicate Western culture. So I suppose from the cultural Marxist point of view, um, uh, the, um, I, I suppose Western institutions, um, liberal democratic institutions that have held the foundations of Western civilization very well for a very long time and we know it works, um, I suppose from the culture Marxists, from their point of view, um, all that great stuff that makes Western civilization great, that's the uh, bourgeoisie. And the proletariat is supposedly um, anyone who is socially discriminated, uh, disadvantaged, so um, uh, non anglo Celtic people, women, um, gays and lesbians, transgender people, from the culture Marxist point of view, I believe they would see them as the proletariat, the working class, so to speak, that uh, needs to overthrow the bourgeois um, Western institutions that's held us together very well for a very long time. That's how I would define it. And certainly something that, that I noticed uh, over the, the past couple of years that started, uh, in my opinion, on the Ameri American college campuses where we were told that, you know, apparently, you know, we hadn't, you know, reached this, um, you know, point in, you know, our society where, um, you know, everyone just judged each other as, you know, individuals. We'd, you know, gotten rid of the, um, you know, bigotry of the past. We were told all of a sudden, apparently, that no society as we know it was, you know, all built on, you know, racism, sexism, uh, you know, homophobia, and we basically need to, needed to deconstruct all of our society because it was all part of this uh, oppression. And th that's what really w w woke me up. It's like, well, these people are saying that pretty much the society that I've grown up with, you know, I've grown up with, you know, people of, you know, different races, you know, uh, sexualities and obviously, you know, got along with people of, you know, the, the op opposite gender. Like all of a sudden you're saying that, no, this is, th th this is all uh, oppression. I mean, that, that that's a pretty, you know, dangerous thing to say that, you know, we need to, you know, tear it all down and, and start again, which is what, you know, Marxism was, that, you know, the, the, the bourgeoisie, the capitalist society was bad, we needed to, you know, start, start, start all again. And of course, when you, when you do that, and as we've seen with, um, you know, socialist and communist societies of the 20th century, I mean, it just causes, you know, a division, hostilities, people, you know, don't trust each other. Uh, and this uh, flows on to, you know, the, uh, the other uh, parts of the uh, or flow on from cultural Marxism, which is, you know, identity politics, where, you know, for example, you and me aren't, uh, you know, aren't allowed to simply like get along like I, I have to consider you, you know, completely different just because, you know, you are Asian and uh, a trans woman where it's like, it, it shouldn't matter that, you know, where we have, you know, different, uh, you know, traits, it should just, it, we should just be able to, you know, talk and relate as human beings. And if we contextualise this in Australian society, 
Um, let's talk about racism in Australian society. So, yes, once upon a time, Australia had a white Australia policy um, and um, for good reasons, we uh, moved on from that in the 70s. But what replaced, what sh in my view should have happened was the abolition of the white Australia policy, that's it. Um, you know, it, it, you know that would that sent the message that, um, as you're saying, it doesn't matter if I'm ethnically Asian, or you know if um, you know it doesn't matter what people's ethnicity and uh, ethnicities and races are. Um, we're all Australians, but of course, what replaced the white Australia policy was multiculturalism, and the angle with um, the angle of immigration policy to go with it was it wasn't just merely multiracial, multi-ethnic uh, immigration. It was on top of that, um, multicultural, multicultural immigration to complement the multiculturalism policy that we still have. So my view, um, the problems, the, the racism problems for the most part should have gone away after the abolition of the white Australia policy no, we had the introduction of multiculturalism as a government policy, and in my view, that laid the foundations for cultural Marxism from a racism point of view in Australia. Uh, one thing because it's multiculturalism, it opens the floodgates for um, a cultural version of Marxism. Uh, one, one thing I've definitely noticed is, like, uh, yes, there there was, you know, bigotry at the past, but the great thing about, you know, our society is we overcame it, but for the left and the cultural Marxism, uh, it's it's never enough. You know, there's always got to be, you know, more, uh, you know, policies. Like, if you just look at um, uh, yeah, Indigenous policy, I mean, it's, you know, uh, giving them all this, you know, extra, you know, welfare and affirmative action, it, it's never enough. Then there was the proposal for constitutional recognition. Suddenly that wasn't enough and they wanted a indigenous advisory body to parliament it just it just keeps getting like that's just one example the demands just keep getting more and more and more extreme and therefore you know we've actually you know violated the the principle of equality before the law and the the flow and effect from this is the effect on uh free speech and free association because it really rather than bringing people together it actually encourages you to be suspicious of people with differences like you know i like for example like i might not want to associate with you because i you know don't want to you know say something you know that could be interpreted as you know transphobic and offend you and you go to the human rights commission and it's a shame that we've come to this um i you know in everyday life i um when i see strangers when i'm out and about in the streets um the last thing that's on my mind is um you know she's a woman he's a man um that person over there is gay um you know he's aboriginal um i mean it, it's cultural marxism so we'll keep to an australian context cultural marxism it's quite distracting because um whatever real you go you go to anyone on the streets some if strangers on the streets you ask them what is it what really matters to them in their everyday lives um, socially and politically, and you know they'll mention real-world issues such as electricity prices, which is uh, thanks to our obsession with renewals, we have one of the highest electricity electricity prices in the world. Um, you know, people people being able to um, hold down their jobs, um, being able to feed their families, pay off a mortgage, um, you know, get their kids um, a good education. And I, I, I'm confident you go to a whole bunch of strangers in the street, and that's what they'll tell you. Um, yeah, unless, of course, um, for you know, if you get in contact with the um, minority of cultural Marxists, who, um, without probably not mentioning much of that, it's been about um, on an apparent ongoing racism and sexism and homophobia and transphobia, like. None of those things have died down in the last decade or two decades or three decades, which they have. Um, you just have to look how well Australia is doing from a 
equality of opportunity point of view, um, we're doing pretty well. Um, and it's um, the, the, the cultural, uh, the cultural Marxist approach is if something's a non issue, turn it into an issue to further our course. This has been an unshackled fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.